Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. It is 8.03 in the morning right now, which is not a time that I normally film at, but I am having to refilm this video because I attempted to film it yesterday and look what happened. It's things like that that make me feel like I am losing my mind sometimes. So for today's video, we are going to be doing a lip sunscreen showdown. I've definitely been noticing requests for lip sunscreen recommendations for a while, but especially over the past year or so, I have noticed an increase in requests for the best lip sunscreens. And because I can't help myself and I have to just take things to the extreme always, I thought that it would be fun to do a lip sunscreen showdown with all of the lip sunscreens that I have tried, including stick chapsticks, squeezy tube balms, oils, glosses, the whole nine. Like, look at all of these lip sunscreens. Oh, okay. Look at all of these lip sunscreens I've tried don't. So in this lip sunscreen showdown, I'm going to be talking through every single detail that you need to know about these lip sunscreens, including the ingredients, how they feel on the lips, if they give you any sort of shine, how long they last, how they smell, and if they have that gross chemically SPF aftertaste or not. We clearly have a lot to talk through today, so let's just jump right into it. All right, we'll start off with the chapstick style lip sunscreens first, and then we'll work our way into the squeezy tubes, the lip oils, the glosses, more of the like liquidy products. In last place in this entire video, we, why'd I just take off the cap? Last place in this video is unfortunately awarded to the Super Goop Lip Screen Sheer SPF 30. This is a non-water resistant lip Lip sunscreen that contains chemical filters like avobenzone, homosale, octisale, and octocrylene. The only inactive ingredient worth highlighting is castor oil, which I think is fine. Like, I don't need my lip sunscreen products to be stacked with all these amazing ingredients, even though a lot of these actually are, which of course is a nice bonus, but the most important thing for me is that it feels comfortable on the lips and that it protects my lips from the sun. This one has an extra, extra lightweight feel. It's definitely the lightest weight out of all of the products in this video, but that's not really a good thing in this situation because it's the kind of lightweight that doesn't really do anything for your lips. I didn't find this to be conditioning at all, and if anything, it actually kind of made my lips feel drier just shortly after applying. Upon initial application, it does give you a little bit of a sheen that I think looks really pretty, but it fades pretty much instantly, which I have to say is basically the case with every single chapstick except for one. So if you're looking for a lip sunscreen product that's really going to enhance the shine of your lips, or give you any sort of long-lasting sheen, then I would not go with any of the chapsticks. Other things to note, this smells just a tiny bit minty, but I didn't even notice the smell when I was applying it. It's only when I like actually sniff the bullet. Super, super subtle. So if you aren't into minty fragrances, I don't think this will bother you. I feel like they actually should have made the mintiness stronger because unfortunately it's not strong enough to mask the SPF aftertaste, I would say that this definitely has a moderate SPF aftertaste. I'm going to give you guys ratings kind of like I did in my lip oil video. So when it comes to that SPF aftertaste, I feel like it's either no aftertaste, a minimal amount, a moderate amount, or a strong amount. So I will flag each lip sunscreen with one of those labels. And this one I would say is a moderate amount. You can definitely, you can definitely taste the chemicals. And in terms of staying power, this one lasts about 20 to 25 minutes on me max, so definitely not long lasting at all. Similar to Shine, I would say when it comes to chapstick, that's pretty much the case across the board. Almost none of them last a long time on my lips. So, um, this is just not really one I would recommend. I really wanted to love it. I loved the idea of this just being part of that like unseen family from Super Goop, that it's clear that it was just going to be really lightweight but it's just one of those that is so lightweight and so barely there that it does barely anything for my lips. Then we have the Vacation SPF Lip Balm Sunscreen SPF 30. This is a water resistant lip sunscreen that also has chemical filters, including avobenzone, homosale, octisale, and octocrylene. This has tons of really nice and active ingredients in it, including coconut oil, soybean oil, olive oil, castor oil, jojoba oil, and cacao butter. I have told you guys before how much I love Vacation's branding strategy. It's just so cool and vintage 
vintage and beachy, but not in a tacky way. And I talked about that in a video called The Power of Branding that I will list in my description box below. I talk about brands that do this really, really well and those that do it not so well. But part of the cool branding marketing tactic for this chapstick is that they're all dessert flavored. So they're called the Vacation Lip Trip Desserts. This one is Bombay, Alaska, but they also have things like Bananas Foster and Strawberry Jello Salad, which normally I feel like I would be grossed out by, but again, it just fits perfectly in with their brand. So I actually loved it here. Even though this one has so many nice ingredients in it, I would say that it feels just like any old chapstick. It's definitely like the most basic feeling chapstick in this video, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but also it's not the best thing because it doesn't really do anything special for my lips. I would say it's definitely below average when it comes to how conditioning it feels. To be fair, I have no idea what Bombay, Alaska smells like, so maybe it smells exactly like that, but I thought this was gonna smell like a really yummy dessert and I'm just like not really getting that. Maybe just like a hint of vanilla. It doesn't smell bad. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> but whatever it is, there is enough of it to mask the SPF aftertaste because I don't really get one with this. I wanna sit with mommy. Oh, hi. I know I love you too. And lasting power for this one, I would say is about 20 minutes. So all in all, it's definitely not a bad product. It's just very, very average in terms of being a chapstick. Next up, we have the Super Goop Play Lip Shield SPF 30, which is a water resistant chapstick that has chemical filters, including avobenzone, homosalate, octisale, and octocrylene. A lot of nice ingredients in this as well, including coconut oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, avocado oil, jojoba oil, and Shea butter. This one does feel really nice upon initial application. I would say compared to a more basic chapstick like the Vacation Chapstick, this one feels maybe just like a tiny bit oilier, which makes it feel softer on the lips. Ma'am, I asked you guys over on Instagram if any of your dogs do this. <laughs> I call it revving her engine because she does this whenever she's ready to play. She kicks her legs back and like jumps up in the air. It's kind of the same thing as after a dog goes potty when they like you know, dig their feet in the ground, but she does this when she's ready to play. Like it's a totally different thing than after she goes to the bathroom. But even though this one does feel a little bit nicer on the lips, it still doesn't do much for me in terms of conditioning, very average. This one is coconut scented. And I gotta be honest, I can't really smell coconut in this at all. I can't really smell anything. They do also have this in a mint and strawberry scent. And when I was looking through the reviews, it seems like the mint scent completely got rid of any SPF aftertaste, which is amazing. So if you are interested in this chapstick, I would go the mint route because this one did not fully get rid of that aftertaste. It wasn't terrible. I would say it has like a minimal aftertaste, but still was there. And this one lasted a good 20 to 25 minutes on me. So again, not bad, but not my favorite lip SPF product that I've ever tried. Then we have the Kula Original Lip Lux Sunscreen SPF 30, which is a water resistant chemical sunscreen containing avobenzone, octisal, and octocrylene. Nice oils in this one, including safflower oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, castor oil, raspberry oil, and jojoba oil. This one does feel nicer than a basic chapstick. I would say there's definitely something elevated about this. It is just softer and nicer, but still, unfortunately, not super conditioning on my lips. There's something wrong with this packaging also. It like doesn't wanna click for me. So average in terms of conditioning, and as far as the smell, this one smells, it's super subtle, but I really like it. Maybe sunscreen's not even the right word. It's just like summery. Well, sunscreen probably is the right word, but it doesn't smell chemically in the way that you get that chemical aftertaste. It just smells good. And this one does have a minimal amount of that SPF aftertaste with a lasting power of about 20 to 25 minutes. So another one that I don't think you'll be super upset with, but I also don't think you'll be super blown away by. The Sunbum Sunscreen Lip Balm SPF 30 is not water resistant, has chemical filters like avobenzone, homosalate, octisale, and octocrylene and aloe and vitamin E in it. This one has a really interesting texture because there's definitely something a lot more oily and slippery about it than a more traditional chapstick. I feel like I could see some of you really enjoying that, but also some of you really not enjoying that because it's definitely different. It's almost like a tiny bit 
greasy, but like not fully, fully greasy. And that oil definitely does stay sitting on my lips, but it's almost like it just stays on the top layer without actually sinking in and nourishing them. So this is still average for me in terms of conditioning. This one definitely smells more potent than some of the other ones that are super subtle. I really like it because to me, it smells like banana popsicles, which I used to love when I was younger. Did any of you guys like those? It smells like that and coconut mixed together. And I have the coconut fragrance, but they do also have pineapple and key lime if those sound more enticing to you. This one has a minimal SPF aftertaste because I feel like that more potent fragrance comes in and kind of like masks a lot of it. So while the SPF aftertaste isn't super intense, you do then get some of that like like banana popsicle coconut taste a little bit. I don't have a huge problem with it. I'd rather it be that than the SPF chemically taste. Where this one really shines is the lasting power. I think because of that oiliness, it just lasts longer on the lips. So I get like a good 40 minutes of wear with this one, which is why it is one of the SPF chapsticks that I tend to reach for over others. The second to last chapstick is the Aquaphor Lip Repair Stick SPF 30. This is a chemical sunscreen with avobenzone, homosale, octisale, and octisale tacrolene in it and it also has nice ingredients like castor oil, shea butter, jojoba oil, and sunflower oil. Even though this is still super lightweight because it's a chapstick, I would say that this has the best texture out of all of the chapsticks in this video. It just feels really nice when you apply it. It's softer. There again is something more elevated about it but it still doesn't like do anything super amazing to my lips in terms of conditioning. It feels good at first, but it fades quickly. This one has like a faint sunscreen smell and does have, I would say like a moderate SPF aftertaste. There's a with a lasting power of about 35 minutes. So one of the better chapsticks, but still not my absolute favorite lip sunscreen product. And the last chapstick in this video is the Everyday Humans Big Mood SPF 30 Milky Lip Balm. This is not water resistant, but it's the only chapstick in this video that is a mineral sunscreen. The active ingredient is zinc oxide, and this is also stacked with things like jojoba oil, shea butter, argan oil, oat kernel oil, sunflower oil, and soybean oil. This one felt Felt very uncomfortable at first. I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. It just felt like a little bit rough and stiff, but that's just because you have to kind of like break through that initial layer. So you could even like, I don't know, rub that on the back of a clean hand to really break it down first. Because after you do that, then it does feel nice and soft. And I get why they call this a milky lip balm, because there's definitely something a little bit milkier about the way that it feels compared to just your average chapstick. Still pretty average in terms of conditioning because of the fact that it's a chapstick, but I would say it's good compared to the other chapsticks in this video. Something to note about this one is that because it contains zinc oxide, it does leave a bit of a white cast on the lips. It's not something that really bothers me because my skin is so fair, but if you do have a darker complexion than I do, deep to dark skin, then I could imagine that that would be a deal breaker. I cannot pinpoint the smell of this. Like it definitely has a smell. I would say it just kind of smells like an oil. You know how oils have a smell? That's this, so there's like no nice fragrance. Just, yeah, it kind of smells like nothing in oil at the same time. But that doesn't really transfer to the taste at all. I would say that this has no taste, including no chemical aftertaste because it doesn't have chemical filters. So that's amazing. And it also does last about 40 minutes on my lips, which is also amazing. So despite that white cast, because of the fact that I really like the way that this feels, it doesn't have any growth, growth, <laughs> What? Gross aftertaste. And it lasts longer than most of the other chapsticks in this video. It is my personal favorite chapstick, but not my personal favorite lip sunscreen because there are others that I like more and let's dive into those. We're done with the chapsticks. The chapsticks just like don't really impress me all. I guess I'm not super impressed with this one either and you guys will see why in a second. This is the Super Goop Play Lip Balm SPF 30. This is not water resistant and contains chemical filters including avobenzone, homosalate, octocrylene, and octisalate. It also has shea butter extract, safflower oil, sesame oil, sunflower oil, and soybean oil. Okay, here's the reason why I'm not impressed with this one. As you can see, there are 
like little granules dispersed throughout this. It's like they forgot to do the final step of mixing it all together. And they're not super sharp, like they're not gonna cut your lips or anything like a scrub, but they do feel just like a little bit bumpy, which is obviously not what you wanna feel when you're putting on a lip balm. And they do mostly smooth out once your lips are fully rubbed together, but still, I feel like I can feel a little bit of it. It's just not completely soft and cushy and smooth, which is what I look for in a nice lip product, which is a bummer because I feel like the texture itself would be nice otherwise. It's not too thin and it's not too thick. It's just like right in between. And this has good shine. This one says with acai, and I feel like I can smell a tiny, tiny bit of a berry fragrance, but not really. And it does have a moderate SPF aftertaste. And last but not least for this guy, the lasting power was about one hour, maybe a little bit less. So all in all, definitely not one that I would recommend because of everything I just said. Next is the Kula Lip Lux Lip Oil Sunscreen SPF 30. This is not water resistant and has chemical filters, avobenzone, homosale, octisale, and octocrylene. This contains sunflower oil and jojoba oil, and it feels like a super lightweight oil on the lips. Compared to the other lip oils that I reviewed in my lip oil showdown, it's super, super thin in texture. This is kind of the same situation that I was talking about with the Sun Bum Chapstick, where you have that feeling of the oil just like sitting on your lips, but it doesn't sink in to really condition the lips super well. So I would say that it's average there. Kind of just smells like oil too. And does have a moderate SPF aftertaste with a lasting power of about 40 minutes. So not my personal fave. Next, we have the Nude Sticks Nude Screen Lip Primer SPF 30, which is not water resistant and is a mineral sunscreen containing zinc oxide, plus probiotics, green tea, and an antioxidant called ethyl ferulate. This one is tinted and it has kind of like a warm tan brown shade, which is something that looks a bit strange on me. I could see that looking really pretty on certain skin tones, but on me, I feel like it just looks kind of weird. This has a very interesting feel. It's super unique because it's lightweight, but it feels wet on your lips. So I don't know, that just took some getting used to, but one once I got used to that, I was like, I actually kind of like how this feels. And it does tingle on the lips in case that's something that you are not into. But otherwise, I would say it does a good job of conditioning, gives a good amount of shine, and has really no smell at all with no SPF taste. And it lasts about 35 minutes. So this is definitely one of the better options in this video. I would love to see them come out with more shades. I feel like if they had some lighter pinks in there and some mauves and rosy colors, this would be a fan favorite for sure. Next is the K-Skin Isle Lip Balm SPF 30, which is not water resistant and contains chemical filters, including avobenzone, homosalate, and octisalate plus some nice ingredients like shea oil, erythritol, aloe juice, and red seaweed extract. This is definitely one of the thickest options in this video in a good way. It just feels nice and plush on the lips. It's really soft. It's not sticky. It does tingle. I would say it's more intense in the beginning and then that tingling definitely fades, but really good to great in terms of conditioning with amazing shine. It just looks nice and juicy on the lips. This smells so good. It smells like vanilla. I really, really really love that whenever lip products smell like vanilla. But I feel like the SPF aftertaste in this one is on the stronger side. It's definitely not as intense the longer that you wear it, but it's one that lingers for sure. And lasting power here is a good hour and a half. So even though this does have a stronger aftertaste, there's so much that I love about this. And this actually comes in two other shades. This one is obviously just clear, but they do have like a pinky shade and a ruddy shade ready, red is shade. So I feel like if they just kept the pigment in those and then swapped the chemical filters for zinc oxide, I mean, obviously there's more to reformulating a product than that, but if they did something like that and they were able to maintain the amazing texture and shine of this product, this would be like one of the best lip SPF products that I had ever tried. Ugh. The Aquaphor Lip Repair and Protect SPF 30 is not water resistant, surprisingly. I feel like for a brand like Aquaphor, that 
that would just be a given, but it's not. It's a chemical sunscreen containing avobenzone, octanoxate, octisale, octacrylene, and oxybenzone. And the other active ingredient is not a sunscreen filter, but petrolatum. This contains 31% petrolatum, which I absolutely love for a lip product because that means it's actually going to condition. And then on top of that, this also has castor oil and shea butter. No surprise, because of that high amount of petrolatum, the texture of this is on the thicker side and out of all the products in this video that are more like a traditional balm and not for cosmetic purposes, like an oil or a gloss, this is my favorite texture. Conditioning is good to great. It gives great shine and mm, it has a very faint sunscreen smell, but does have a moderate sunscreen aftertaste with a lasting power of about an hour and a half. So this is one of those products that I feel like I just put up with the aftertaste for because of the fact that I love the way that it feels. It looks nice and shiny on the lips and it actually lasts with conditioning benefits. Because as we have seen throughout this video, it's actually not that easy to find all of those things in a lip sunscreen product. We are nearing the end here. Third to last is the Naked Sundays SPF 50 Glow and Go Lip Oil. This is not water resistant and has chemical filters like homosalate, octocrylene, avobenzone, and octosalicylate plus some nice oils like raspberry oil, watermelon oil, and jojoba oil. The color of this one is like a light warm toned beige. They do also have one that is more of a classic pink shade, which looks beautiful, but that one is watermelon scented and I usually don't love watermelon fragrance lip products. This one is salted caramel. I think it just smells like brown sugar. It smells so good. And this one feels so nice to apply. It's like a jelly lip oil. So it has that like jelly cushiness to it. It's not too thin, it's not too thick, it's right in between. It does tingle a little bit, but it's not as intense as some of the other products. So not something that bothers me at all. Conditioning is good to great for me and it gives great shine. However, even though this has this amazing brown sugary smell, the SPF taste is still like moderate to strong. And this one also lasts about an hour and a half for me. Aside from the aftertaste, the only other issue that I have with this product, <coughs> what just happened, is the applicator and the packaging. I just feel like it's too small and it doesn't scoop up nearly enough product. So you do have to dip back into the tube several times to actually get that amazing texture, which is fine, but just something to note because it's one of those where at first you're like, oh, this isn't very good, but you just have to dunk back in to actually get enough product. So again, this is one of those where I will just put up with the aftertaste because I love everything else about it. I'll deal with it, I'll keep using it, but I would love to see this with zinc oxide as well since it's tinted. Second to last is the Black Girl Sunscreen Make It Pop SPF 50. This is not water resistant and has chemical filters including octocrylene, octisalate, homosalate, and avobenzone. This has tripeptide one in it and hyaluronic acid, I love seeing peptides in lip products. Plus avocado oil and jojoba oil. This has the thickest texture out of all the products in this video. I absolutely love it. It feels so nice and cushy on the lips. And it does get a little bit tacky the longer that you wear it, but it's not one where you're like, oh gosh, this is so sticky and your lips are sticking together. Nothing like that, just like some slight tackiness, but it's great in terms of conditioning. It gives amazing, amazing shine. Love that about it. Doesn't really have a smell. It is fragrance free and does have, I would say like a moderate to strong SPF aftertaste. But again, I put up with it because I love the texture of this so much and it lasts a good two hours for me. So this one is definitely my second favorite and I also love how affordable it is. The winner of this showdown goes to the Color Science Lip Shine SPF 35. This is a water resistant lip sunscreen that contains zinc oxide, also has peptides and hyaluronic acid, and vitamin E. I have this in the shade Champagne, which is like a really light beigey pink, peachy pink. They do have four shades total. I am dying to try the pinkier shade and the like rosier shade. I think that they're just super beautiful. And this one has a great texture, but similar to the Naked Sundays lip oil situation, you wouldn't know it unless you dunk back in a bunch. So definitely be aware of that. I just don't like the packaging or the applicator. It doesn't pick up nearly enough products. So at first when I was applying it, I was like, this is not good. But after coating my lips several times, I was like, oh, this is actually 
great. I love the way it feels. Not as thick as the Black Girl sunscreen, but one that coats the lips really, really well. It also does start to feel a little bit tacky the longer that you wear it, but it's not sticky and it does tingle a little, but that fades as well. Conditioning is good, shine is great, and this one has a slightly minty smell. It's really subtle though and no SPF aftertaste with about one and a half to two hours of lasting power. So this one is definitely the winner of this showdown for me. It's my favorite lip sunscreen for sure. I wish that they would update the packaging, especially because it's not super, super affordable, but I love the different color options. I love that it doesn't have a funky taste and I love the way that it feels and looks. So those are all of the lip sunscreens that I have tested out. I know that that was a lot to go through, but I wanted to just give you guys as much information as possible so that you don't waste your money on something that you feel like you won't like. As always, everything is listed and linked in order of mention in my description box below. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Are you going to test any of these out? Are there other lip sunscreens that you think I should test out? Let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, you know the drill. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I need to go get my crazy hyper dog and play with her. Can you hear her squeaking or squeaker? Ah, I hope you have a great few days.